kind of uh, ad-libbing a, a nebula here, a vast interstellar object. I looked at a, a ton of images from um, Hubble telescope to see what these things sort of actually look like. And this is a pretty good, it's not, it's based mostly on an, the Orion Nebula, but it's not an exact reproduction of it. It's just trying to understand the essential structure of it. And what, is, what is it about the Orion Nebula or, or, or just this kind of imagery uh, that, that, that you know, made you feel like, yeah, I want to incorporate it into my, my current work? I have been doing, for quite some time, um, sort of large landscapes. And um, I've been doing mostly kind of American scenery in a certain way. It has a, 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 a real strong reference to the Hudson River School and that idea of the American sublime, but also to sort of the theatricality of taking that issue on in a certain way and what its value is right now in, in America, I guess. Um, but I kind of was intrigued with the idea of a nebula or doing something of outer space because it's it's a landscape, well, first of all, that you can't actually see without a telescope, but it's a landscape completely beyond the pale of human scale. It's, it is really an abstraction in a certain way. I'm not so sure. That turquoise seemed like a really good idea at the time. Now, maybe it needs to be bluer. I'm from Cambridge, Massachusetts, and uh, my father is from Belgrade, and my mother is from Massachusetts, like for a long time, old Yankee family. So I grew up in an immigrant household and also an old Yankee household. It was a strange combination of things, um, which was actually kind of interesting. I came to New York as soon as I could. There's not really a whole ton going on up in Boston in, in a lot of ways. For some reason, that I don't fully understand myself. I've always taken some real pleasure in representing things. When I first got here, it was just like you just couldn't do that. It was just sort of like some sort of weird law that I'd never heard of that said that you had to do something that was either abstract or you know, this particular kind of abstraction or this particular kind of conceptual work that you had to do. I mean, you had to do it. It's different now but it's something that I'm still interested in proposing, which is the idea that something can be both illustrational or represent, representative of something, and at the same time can have some kind of conceptual meaning or force behind it. I'm interested in things that contain more than one kind of information sort of simultaneously. It's sort of interesting to me that the paint that, that you can do something that it's sort of, it is representing something, but at the same time, it's very clearly just paint. But I think it's very accurate in a certain way of how we feel about ourselves as, as people in the world. I mean, we do contain something very abstract and separate from us, but we're also very much grounded in our own physicality. So there's like a, some sort of river delta or something seen through a, a bashed hole in the wall. There are a couple things with these that are interesting to me. I'm, I'm sort of, it amuses me that it's playing around with, with an essential I idea of one of my favorite artists of the last 30 years, Gordon Matta Clark, and the sort of interventions he made in architecture in a certain way. But it's paint. So it's a different, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a faux Gordon Matta Clark, which is really kind of amusing to me. That's one of the ways in which I've, I do in my work a lot of times play around with the work of, 
of video people or film people or conceptual sculptors or whatever, but sort of throw it back into the realm of, of paint. And then with the nebula, I just thought, well, what if we do a landscape that is just completely off the charts, somewhere else entirely? You know, not a, an utter abstraction, but effectively an abstraction. So I'm, I'm making a very realistic depiction of something that is, on a meta level, utterly abstract. And then I'm framing it with a realistic depiction of a, a, a whole, like a Trump thing that's, that's basically having some fun with the whole idea of a picture plane. So that's the way in which I'm sort of interested in things playing around. But at the same time, the, the thing is that, I, again, I actually just really enjoy paint. And I enjoy painting things that I can recognize, like busted wallboard or whatever. It's sort of fun. And we were talking about this off camera a little before, about what artists talk about their work and what they think about what they're doing. And if you do make your own things, there is this extraordinary relationship between your own mental memory and cognition and your hand memory and cognition. Your hand obviously doesn't have a little brain in it, it's all, it's all in your mind, but it's a different part of your mind. And it, it is really interesting that your hand memory and what your hand is actually trying to do is something that you don't understand yourself. And that's, the, that's where it gets kind of catchy in a way, I mean in terms of an artist talking about their own work because you can't articulate that. It just, it just is. I'm very interested in the idea of something of a landscape that's both being constructed and demolished at the same time. These are the lines along which I am thinking right now for this for this sort of thing, and then so you mix the animals into this. I don't know. I may change my mind entirely about the whole thing. <laughs> 